Hello and welcome to New Frontiers on CCTV International. I'm Ji Xiaojun in Beijing. And today we reach the concluding part of our investigation into events at the dawn of Chinese nation in and around a place known as Huangdi City in Hebei Province. In the spring of 1995, a nation burial site was discovered at a place called Jiangjialiang in Yangyuan County, Hebei. The site yielded a number of relics dating from the period of Hongshan culture. The discovery allowed the archaeologists and historians to reach a number of conclusions concerning events in the area 5,000 years ago. In June of 1995, archaeologists from the Hebei Institute of Cultural Relics and Archaeology and the Faculty of Archaeology and Museology of Peking University began an excavation at Jiangjialiang. At the site, they drew lines from a point in the southwestern corner stretching to the east and north in a right angle, and then mapped out 16 square exploration pits measuring 10 by 10 meters. In effect, this meant that almost the entire Jiangjialiang site was to be excavated. One afternoon, the archaeologists had been working only a short while when technician Gao Wen Tai, working in tomb M75, found an object caked in soil about the size of a quail egg. It was found lying on the right side of the head of the tomb's occupant. After carefully removing the soil from the object, Gao Wentai still could not make out what it was. He asked Li Jun, the head of the archaeological team, to come over and take a look. From the Jiangjialiang graveyard, archaeologists not only unearthed the jade pig dragon representing Hongshan culture, but also several dozen pottery objects and a large number of stone and bone objects bearing characteristics of Hongshan culture. Archaeologists had been searching for evidence of prehistoric civilization in the Sangan River Valley in Hebei province for many years, and this important discovery was the payoff for their persistence. In tombs of another kind, archaeologists found pottery burial objects that had been placed at the head and the feet of the deceased. It was obvious that these pottery objects had been broken deliberately before being interred. But why did they break these objects? This is a 这种现象在西亚的两河流域中，也就是指伊拉克境内的幼发拉底河和底格里斯河，在那里的哈拉夫文化中，他们被称为晦气。但是我们这里晦气的背后啊，它的深层原因，我们还现在解释不清。from the features of the objects unearthed at the Jiangjialiang graveyard, the archaeologists confirmed them as belonging to Hongshan culture. But they also saw in them a number of cultural elements particular to northwest China and even some particular to Central Asia. What did this indicate? According to the 
要关。战争呢，是一以一种激烈的方式达到统一或融合的目的。那么，文化生活、生产方式和宗教信仰，随之也会被同化，或者呢，被改变。With this understanding in mind, archaeologists collected all the human bones from the tombs, but they were especially interested in the skull and pelvis, as these can determine race, gender, and age. The bones were then wrapped in soft paper and delivered to Jilin University's archaeological DNA lab for physical analysis and research. This was done in the hope that the scientists at Jilin University would be able to identify the race genes, genealogical relationships, and social composition of the people buried in these tombs. They also hope to find out about the features of the time in which they lived and the clan they belonged to. Archaeologists worked at the Jiang Jialiang graveyard for more than a month, and in that time, they also unearthed remains of houses. The foundations of the houses had been laid out in irregular squares, each about 30 square meters in area. The houses had floors of earth that had been pressed hard, and along the four sides of the foundations, there were holes in neat order. In the southeastern corner of each house, there was a doorway. At the foot of the southern wall, there was a fire pit, and there was also an adobe bed. On top of the adobe bed was a layer of clay, five centimeters thick, hardened by the fire used to heat the bed. The archaeologists unearthed many important artifacts from underneath the bed, among them charred animal bones and a number of tiny stone chips. Now, the presence of houses at Jiang Jialiang had the archaeologists puzzled. Why would houses have been built at a burial site? Or should the question be posed the other way around? Why would a burial site be established so close to where people lived? We have been working for a few years. The relationship between the 是也，也就是说，这个墓葬打破了房屋的机制，也打破了房基的这个完整性，就说明了这个房子是在之前，墓葬是在之后。此外呢，从房子和墓葬里出土的文物来看呢，他们也是大相径庭，他们相互之间看不出任何的联系来，我们就判断。房屋遗址和这个墓葬群不属于同一个时代。Although the archaeologists had determined that the houses were older than the graves, they could not pinpoint the date of their construction. To determine the construction period and the identity of the people who had lived in these houses, some charcoal and fragments of animal bones were removed from the sites of the houses and sent to a lab at Peking University for carbon-14 testing. At the end of 1998, the Hebei Institute of Archaeology sent human bone samples taken from the Jiang Jialiang graveyard to the Research Center of Frontier Archaeology attached to Jilin University for a DNA test. Jilin University has the oldest archaeological DNA lab in China, built at a time when archaeological DNA research 
was an emerging discipline. The researchers at the lab determined the genetic relationship between individuals of this community buried in the ancient tombs by enlarging the DNA extracted from the bones, establishing the sequence, and analyzing it. Through this means, scientists are able to work out the social structure and clan relationships of people buried in ancient tombs.江家良的这个这份这个研究成果，应该说是我们吉林大学古DNA研究的第一份成果。那么当时呢，我们是这样设计这个课题的，就是说江家良墓地的埋葬制度决定了它的这个社会结构的属性可能是比较复杂。用传
and the houses about 6,800 years ago. This period of time corresponds to the era of Yang Xiao culture and to the Shen Nong era as recorded in history books. It is thus certain that the houses found at Jiang Jialiang were built in the early period of the Shen Nong era, while the tombs were built in the latter period of the Shen Nong era. But who built these houses and tombs? Yao 藏式藏俗以及随张品方面都有着相同或者是相近的方面。The Dan and Gou Graveyard in Chufeng Municipality in Inner Mongolia was located at the source of Hongshan culture. Archaeologists categorize it latter Hongshan culture according to the cultural outlook and evidence in the Dan and Gou Graveyard. Li Jun holds that the time when the Jiang Jialiang graveyard was in use and the genetic relationships between the deceased found there are the same as that found at the Da Nango graveyard. Moreover, pottery artifacts unearthed at the many archaeological sites in the counties of Yushan and Zhuolu adjoining Yang Yuan County look much the same as those unearthed at the Jiang Jialiang graveyard. These artifacts reveal that 5,000 years ago the clan that developed Hongshan culture was ruling the region along the Yanshan Mountains and in the Sangan River Valley. But what was this ancient clan represented by those buried at the Jiang Jialiang graveyard really like? Jiang Jialiang, this type of ancient people, their race type, should be considered as the type of ancient people called the Gu Hua. 是属于古华北类型的古代居民，那这样的一个结果呢，和我们DNA分析的结果是吻合的，是一致的。嗯，这个古华北类型居民它的主要分布区呢，是是这样的，在先秦时期，古华北类型居民是以内蒙古的中南
we can see that these people who lived 5,000 years ago look much the same as Chinese today. The major archaeological discoveries made by the Hubei Provincial Administration of Cultural Relics in the area around Zhangjiakou City along the Sangan River reveal that 5,000 years ago, human beings were very active in this region and created a brilliant civilization. Vestiges of Yangshao culture, Hongshan culture, Hogang culture and Longshan culture found in this region show that production tools and utensils for daily use were developed during the periods of these cultures. This region is the only one found so far in China where people of different clans and cultures lived in compact and mixed communities. Two great wars fought 5,000 years ago in the areas of Zhuo Lu and Ban Chuan altered the course of Chinese history. Renowned Chinese archaeologist Su Bingqi calls these two wars two tremendous collisions between the South culture and the North culture. Archaeological finds indicate that the roots and the meeting point of the two cultural collisions form a capital Y. Su Bingqi holds that Zhang Jiakou at the fork of these roots is the interface of the fusion of these cultures from the south and the north in prehistoric China and the two-way passage for the exchange and integration of these cultures. Zhang Jiakou city lies to the north of the Yan Shan Mountains and the Tai Han Mountains and it is the eastern starting point of the region in Eurasia where farming and husbandry interlocked. In remote antiquity, during times of peace, it was a key area in which material and cultural exchange between farmers and herdsmen and communication between the central government and nomadic tribes in the northern frontiers took place. During times of war, it was an area of strategic significance. According to historical records and archaeological finds made in recent years, this was the situation that took shape 5,000 years ago. Zhuolu County in the southern part of Zhang Jiakou municipality was the site of the battlefield where Huang Di fought against Yan Di and Chu Yo for supremacy. It was also where the three great clans under these three great chieftains began to integrate. The war cries and brutal battles of the ancient past have long been muffled in the dust of history. But stories about the three ancestors of Chinese civilization, Wang Di, Yan Di, and Chu Yo, have continued to be told from that ancient time to the present day. The Battle of Zhuo Lu, the great confrontation between the tribes of Huang Di and Chu Yo, was one of the most significant battles in Chinese history. Its impact has been felt throughout the course of the subsequent 5,000 years. The coming together of the tribes of Huang Di and Chi Yu following the battle was the foundation on which the prehistoric Chinese nation was established. Well, that brings us to the end of our exploration of the ancient city of Zhuo Lu, otherwise known as Huang Di City. And thank you for staying with us on today's New Frontiers. I'm Qi Xiaojun from CCTV International. Bye for now.